Hey everyone, welcome to this animation tutorial where I'll be showing you how I created this liquid dripping light mode and dark mode transition in Adobe XD. So before you start, you're going to want to work on your light mode and dark mode designs. I used screens from a previous project that I had worked on and simply applied them onto a Photoshop mockup. You can choose to do the same or you simply export the images as they are and put them on a rounded rectangle to resemble a foam shape. And once you're done, then you can proceed with the animation. So once your designs are ready, you can paste the first one on your artboard. I changed the background color just to match the phone model a bit more. Then you can duplicate that image and replace the second one with the dark mode version of your screen. This is just so that they're in exactly the same position and the same size. I then went and drew my liquid drip shape using the pen tool. I usually draw these kinds of shapes using sharp angles and then with the select tool I go back and double click the points that I want curved. Um, I just personally feel like that helps me achieve this kind of shape a lot better. Once I'm totally satisfied with the shape I have, I will go back and change the fill color as usual using the eyedropper tool. Um, I want it to somewhat match the background of my phone model. This is an optional step that you can do, but one I did just to add a bit more depth to my shape. So I duplicated the original shape um, and added a slightly lighter border, as you can see, and applied object blur to it. This is just to create a bit of 3D effect to the shape that I have. I renamed that layer light shadow. I then duplicated it once more and renamed the third one dark shadow. Once you're happy with your shapes and shadows, um, just make sure that they are positioned behind your phone models on the layer panel um, just so they don't appear on top and then you can proceed with duplicating your artboard. On your second artboard, you're going to be adjusting the shapes of all the layers that you created to achieve a dynamic liquid drip effect. Once you're happy with your adjusted background shape, you can then also adjust the shadows. If you chose to include shadows, this simply means dragging them and adjusting each of the points using the pen tool or the select tool so that they are similar to the background shape like they were in your original artboard. They don't have to be in the perfect position just as long as the look and feel of them is similar to what you had before. Once you're happy with those adjustments, we'll now proceed with masking, which is how you achieve the light mode, dark mode transition. So in this instance, I'm masking the dark mode version of my screen because that is the version that is on top, and I've duplicated my background layer to use as my masking shape. This is because I want to achieve the same shape changes um, that occur in the background with my mask as well. So once I've duplicated that layer, I select the new layer as well as the image I want to mask and go to object mask with shape. So once a mask is applied, you'll see that the dark mode screen only appears within our mask shape. I had to go back and adjust this slightly because I only wanted the dark mode screen to start appearing after animation had begun. So I moved up my shadow layers and my background layer um, and then I simply did the mask action once more um, with my new mask shape position. Once you're done with your first art book, you move forward with your second where you'll be adjusting your mask shape once again. You can do this by simply copying the new background shape you had adjusted in your second artboard and using that as the new mask for your phone shape. So also be sure to rename your mask shape layer in your second artboard so that's the same as in the first. That way when you're prototyping the animation later on, it'll function as it should. So now we're going to be proceeding with prototyping. Um, so you go into prototype mode and you can adjust the settings as you'd like. Um, I like to use keys and gatepad for my transition activations and also I set the ease to ease in and out in duration to 3.5 seconds because I wanted it to seem slow. Of course the most important thing is to make sure that you are set on auto animate so that you can get um, this type of transition.
At this point, you can go back and make any adjustments that you'd like. But other than that, you are done with your animation. I hope this tutorial was helpful. And of course, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out.